Hi guys, so today we're going to go over the basics of Illustrator, uh, a review of what we did in class. Uh, we're going to just start with some of the more uh, basic things and talk about the program itself, get your feet wet, uh, so you'll be able to use it for laser cutting. Uh, we'll start with a new uh, document here in Illustrator. Uh, we talked a little bit in class about how we went from points to inches because we'll be printing something. Uh, and we changed our initial uh, artboard to 8 by 8 inches and hit create. Uh, this gives you an 8 by 8 inch artboard. Uh, if you hit command R, you'll bring up the ruler, uh, which allows you to see everything. Um, and you can see the actual inches at the top and inches uh, going down here. Uh, command minus uh, zooms out. Command plus zooms in. And if you're zoomed in quite a lot, you can hit Command-0 to zero out or to uh, reset the screen here. And then finally, hit on holding the spacebar key allows you to pan or move around within uh, that artboard. I'm going to Command-1 once here. <clears throat> uh, to get to the artboard settings, if you need to change this artboard, it's currently 8x8. Eight eight. Uh, you can click on this little icon here, and if you don't see the icon, it might be that you're not in the correct window workspace. So go ahead and go to Essentials Classic or reset it uh, and then you should see the artboard setting right here if you hover over it you'll sh see the keyboard shortcut uh, shift plus uh, O and uh, if you click on it this allows you to modify your artboard uh, either directly with the little um, anchor points here or using the properties window and you'll notice that the properties windows always reflect whatever tool you you have so it's a nice way a nice shortcut to get to where you need to be Okay, so that's the artboard setting. It allows you to make artboards. You can create additional artboards. So you can see if I zoom out of my um, uh, space here, I could have as many artboards as I want uh, and work on each one of these as separate pages uh, and then um, export each one of these one, two, three, four. I'm going to undo that just so uh, we can stick with uh, command zero to zoom in here. So we can stick with one artboard. And I'm going to go back to my selection tool. By the way, the selection tool is uh, the letter V as in Victor. Uh, and that's usually the tool that you'll want to be on uh, to select objects. Uh, the next tool we're going to go to is the letter M. Uh, it's going to be the rectangle tool, although if you click and hold, you see you have lots of other tools. In fact, all of the tools on this list here, a lot of them that have this little rabbit ear at the bottom, allow you to click and hold and see a, a wider range of other tools uh, that you can use. So if we're going to click and hold and um, you'll see stuff. We're going to select the marquee tool uh, or the rectangle tool here. I'm going to draw out a rectangle and some things that we're going to talk about right now you'll notice that when I drew out the rectangle I have a stroke and that is the outline right and I can increase the size of that outline as you can see I'm just zooming in here uh, and decrease it that's our stroke and notice it's filled with a color I can click on this fill color and change that fill color to a different color value uh, you'll notice also when I clicked on the color here in the properties panel the this little area also changed. The foreground fill is uh, on top and the background is always going to be the stroke color. So if you click on the background and double click it, you'll bring up your color picker and you'll notice that you can actually change your stroke color as well as your fill color here. Um, we're going to hit the letters D for default, which brings everything back to uh, the way it was because we're going to be using this program to create outlines for laser cutting. So we're not as interested in the colors per se. Uh, the fill color in this case is white. Uh, we want it to be transparent because the laser doesn't care about the, the color on the inside. To make something transparent, you just click on this little none for the fill color and now it is transparent. I'm going to go back to my selection tool. My selection tool allows me now to move this box around. You'll notice that if I click in the middle now because it's transparent, I can't really select it unless I select this little middle button right here. Uh, you'll notice that when you click on the object to select it, you get anchor points, which you can then modify so you can change your scale. Uh, you can hold the shift key down to scale proportionally. Uh, and you'll notice that these little dots exist, and that allows you to uh, bring the corners in and out um, so you can round them uh, very easily.
Okay, to create, uh, let's create another uh, rectangle. So we're just going to back to our rectangle tool M, but this time we're going to just double click one, two, and it brings up um, our dialog window here, which allows us to dial in exactly the settings uh, that we want uh, two by two in this case. I'm going to zoom out. So this is a two by two inch uh, square. That's a perfect square. And you'll notice that if I go to my selection tool V, uh, that the square has no fill, and the um, you can see that the uh, everything overlaps as far as the stroke. Now again, because we'll be laser cutting this, the stroke itself it has no value, so it will only cut these little lines here. So be aware that when the stroke, when things look thick, it might be uh, you might not be getting this if that's what you're expecting to cut. You'll be getting the blue line. All right, let's move on to uh, maybe a different um, a different looking uh, shape, like an ellipse. Uh, so we'll just draw an ellipse. Holding the shift key down with any one of these allows us to uh, create a perfect shape, uh, either a perfect square or a perfect, in this case, circle. Um, and again, double clicking allows us to uh, create a perfect, uh, perfect circle or whatever shape we want with the exact dimensions we want that will be laser cut perfectly. Uh, another tool that we talked about in class was the pen tool, P for pen. Uh, the way that this tool works, we'll just move over here so you can see it. It allows you to, to um, oops, sorry, let's see, got the wrong tool. Uh, click and hold, and it was a P for pen. It allows you to click, 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 and those make straight lines, but if you click and hold, that creates the uh, curvature that you need, and then you can anticipate, you can see where you need to anticipate that that line, that curve, so whenever, so when you end up with a solid shape like this, you know that, in essence, it's like, click, 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 but if you click here and hold, again, you're getting halfway of that, half of that curve. The other half of the curve comes at this point, and you can kind of see that happening, right? Which is more difficult to, to work with. Now, there is another pen tool uh, that's more uh, usable. It's called the curvature tool here. Uh, and if you click on that, it does more of what you saw in, um, in, in some of the vector programs. You can kind of see that it only works in curves. Uh, but it actually allows you to to see where you're going with the curve so you can um, but it does modify the, the previous curve so the, the difference between the pen tool and the curvature tool is in this case you kind of need to know where that uh, curve is going to go whereas here you're kind of making things go um, and then you're 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 kind of like working through it uh, and then after the fact for both of these tools you can modify them now, if I use my selection tool V, you'll notice that I can obviously still just scale things if I wanted to. But there is another selection tool, which is right next to the um, uh, regular selection tool, and that's called the uh, direct selection tool, letter A. And if you click on that, and then you click on any one of these shapes, you'll notice that now you're allowed to click on any of these anchor points and modify any single point uh, in the shape. Uh, whether it's the curvature or the location of that anchor point. So for in this case, we can actually modify just this point. Uh, we can modify this point, or this point has a curvature on it, so we can actually increase its curvature by um, just pulling open and closed uh, this tangent line to that curve. So the direct selection tool allows us to select specific anchor points whereas the um, regular selection tool just allows us to select the shape itself and move it as an object, scale it. You can even rotate uh, with the regular selection tool. Okay, uh, let's continue on. So those are two pen tools that you'll need to practice with. I'm going to put uh, some of this stuff and I'm gonna overlap everything. And please notice that everything has got no fill and that was because when I changed the fill to be transparent and the stroke to be uh, just a default, uh, everything that I get that gets made after the fact uh, has that property. Uh, so just be aware, if yours is not doing what mine is doing, please just hit the letter D for default and then make your uh, fill color uh, transparent and everything will work. 
Now the way to combine shapes into, as you can see, if this were a laser cut, it would cut all these little pieces out. This would be the path of the laser beam and you'd have all these little chunks. But if you wanted this shape to be one single shape or you wanted to create a shape using multiple shapes, this is where the Shape Builder tool comes in. So I'm going to go to the Shape Builder tool, which uh, you can get to right here, Shift of M. And you can see the little uh, tutorial of how the Shape Builder tool works. So the way it works is first you have to select all the shapes you want to include in the Shape Builder. So if I select all of these by going in my Selection tool up here and marquee around everything, I can then go to the Shape Builder tool. And the way the Shape Builder tool works, it, it allows you to click and hold across boundaries uh, and that takes those boundaries and connects them all into a single unit. So you can see, I del in essence, it deletes those boundaries. So again, just click, hold, and it deletes those boundaries, uh, as you can kind of see here. If you wanted to get rid of certain things like this element on the outside, you don't want it. Obviously, doing something like this, it won't delete the boundary on the outside. What you need to do is hold the Option key down, and that deletes the uh, boundaries on the outside. So if you wanted something like where you needed the circle for the inside but not for the outside, holding the Option key down, you'll notice changes the cursor, and that allows you to delete these shapes. Uh, the same thing uh, on the inside. You can hold the, curse, uh, the option key down. Uh, it, it deletes the shape, but in essence it does similar things. But this is how it would look uh, if that shape was deleted. So again, hold, just without the option key allows you to create a single object like this. Gets rid of those interior lines. Uh, so if you're laser cutting, this will be the path that it takes. Holding the option key down removes the ob object outside. Uh, and so that removes um, ele any element that's like that you use to help you uh, make this sh complex shape. So uh, that's a little bit about the Shape Builder tool, a very important tool, very useful. Uh, it doesn't totally replace um, some of the other ways of combining objects, but uh, it definitely is useful. Okay, the, the next thing I wanted to talk about, I'm going to go back to our rectangular marquee. And I'm just going to create uh, one rectangle inside of the other. And uh, what I want to do with these two rectangles, uh, say for instance, I made, I'll just zoom in so you can see it. Uh, say, oh, let's make one more rectangle here so you can see it. Now, if I wanted these rectangles to be perfectly uh, centered on each other and aligned, I could try to do it by eye, but there is a, I could just select all of them here with my selection tool. And you'll notice that in my properties panel, there is an align area. And this allows us to center align everything that we've selected uh, in both vertical and horizontal. There are even more uh, alignment options if you click on these three dots, uh, as you can see here, which gives you some spacing options as well. So if you wanted to space 10 things out perfectly equally uh, you could do that now I want this to be one single object uh, that I use all the time um, and so what I'm going to do is select all three of these using my selection tool so just marquee all of them and then I'm going to go to object and group command G now if I select uh, any one of these paths to move this object uh, it acts as a group and you can kind of see I can hold the shift key down and scale it I can rotate it uh, as a group if an object is a group and you need to modify something in it, you notice you can't do that without either going inside of the group, which you can do by double clicking it. And you'll notice when you do that, it goes in the group. And at that point, you can change one of these objects, like rotate it. Um, and now you, are, you have rotated and changed this group. And now if you leave the group by clicking out here or just hitting this little arrow, you'll notice that that object still exists as a group. Uh, let me go ahead and move it. Um, and that's one way of doing it. Another way is just to select the group and ungroup it using the same technique, Shift Command G. Uh, now it is no longer grouped, and so now you can individually work with these objects. Uh, the final thing that we're going to be doing today, uh, or at least that we did in class, uh, after um, playing with our, our different shapes and using their shape builder, was the text tool, T for text. Uh, and you can see it right here. And what we're doing is just going to click somewhere in the space and type out our names. Uh, I'll just see like CHRIS. And then I'm going to double click to select those letters. And you'll notice uh, very, you know, these are our controls that you know how to use. I'm going to make this 100 points. 
um, just so you could see it and uh, I'll just leave the font and other things uh, as they are at this point I'm going to go back to my selection tool and now if you wanted to laser cut this shape right here the shape would be the blue that you see around the edges that would be a square what you need to do with uh, a lot of the shapes uh, that uh, you either bring in as images or in this case as text is you need to create an outline uh, and you'll notice on the properties panels at the bottom there is a create outline button you'll notice when you do that uh, you'll see an actual outline for these shapes in fact if I hit the letter A the select tool you can see the outlines directly and you can modify them just by uh, clicking on any one of them uh, another way to do this I'm just gonna undo that uh, is not just this create outline button um, but to go to object uh, expand uh, this is normally how we've done it in the past when I do that it'll give me this I want to expand the object itself uh, and then the fill and then it'll hit OK and you'll see you get the same thing uh, again we're in the direct select tool so we can see the path uh, once you're uh, you've done that uh, you can see it's still grouped uh, obviously it was one word and it keeps it as a grouped set of uh, words so you can always go to object ungroup and when you do that, now you can individually uh, modify these letters to your heart's content, right? You can move them around. Uh, and because uh, these letters by default were set to an uh, interior black stroke with no outside stroke, uh, you can select all of these and hit D for default and then get rid of that interior stroke. And this is what the laser cutter would cut. And obviously, if you wanted to, you could go through the shape builder tool by selecting everything and then uh, just clicking and moving your path through so that whatever the laser cutter is cutting uh, it won't double cut uh, letters off so at this point this becomes one solid path with the exception here um, and maybe I can fix that by just modifying this anchor point here and you can kind of see this is where it's going to, to cut so I'll just take this point cut it maybe delete that uh, take this point take this point and delete that okay and just be careful what you delete don't delete important uh, things and remember when you're using this path for laser cutting it will cut this area just like you see it here right you you see it as a nice thick stroke but in essence if I go down with my stroke to a very small point this is what the laser will path will do uh, just like this and this will be left by itself by the way okay um, hopefully this gives you a little bit of a uh, uh, overview of uh, Illustrator in our next tutorial I'll go over how to turn an image into a vector piece of artwork